this video, I'm gonna go over what Jung calls the extroverted rational types. So obviously they're extroverted, so they their dominant function is in relation to the object or the objective world. And uh, their, the rational side of this type is the fact that they're either dominant in extra in in feeling or in thinking and so in Jung's typology both feeling and thinking are called rational because they are able to um, you know make judgments using either their thinking or their feeling and so these types would be dominant in either extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking and so both these uh, functions are have a proclivity to judge things on what is usually accepted among, like objectively, among a group or um, what is usually accepted in the world. And so um, that is kind of just a quick snapshot of what we're dealing with here when we talk about the extroverted rational types that Jung is talking about. And so uh, this would be in a distinction between the, uh, the irrational types, which would have a dominant function, that of perception, which would be either intuition or sensation, because those functions are functions which we use to receive or perceive information. And so um, the, what dominates these extroverted rationalistic or rational types is that they are predominantly leading with judging functions, functions that which they use to uh, judge information uh, according to a particular framework. And so uh, that framework is either some type of formula that the person has via their thinking, uh, or it is uh, the extroverted feeling framework, which is the kind of the general values that people hold um, and, and the general interactions between relationships between people and general pleasant pleasantness, uh, according to like, you know, aesthetics. So the what people usually see is aesthetically uh, good and stuff like that or, or bad. So they're using the extroverted feeling to discriminate and make judgments based on um, the the general consensus of what of um, group feeling values. And so, if you know Myers Briggs, um, now Jung's original typology is a little different to Myers Briggs, but I still think it's useful to name the types because a lot of people online are familiar with Myers Briggs and their own type. So it's good to know what Myers Briggs types would correspond with the extroverted rational types. Uh, and that would be the ESTJ and the ENTJ, which both have extroverted thinking. And it would be the ESFJ and ENFJ, which, which both have extroverted feeling all in the dominant slot. And so uh, Jung says here, and I quote, it is a general distinguishing mark of both types that their life is to a great extent subordinated to rational judgment. So what that means is see, their life is subordinated to rational judgment. So their life is subordinated to either their extroverted thinking or their extroverted feeling. So in that sense, their extroverted feeling or thinking has a kind of a framework that comes with it, uh, rational lines of, of, of thinking or feeling that structure what they will accept and use as kind of a, a framework to um, to choose a certain path or make certain decisions or take action. And so their feeling or thinking actually um, makes a judgment straight away. So through that judgment, through that paradigm of the, their judging function, 
everything else flows out through that. And that's why Jung says that um, they are subordinated to rational judgment. You see, so because the other two functions, the irrational functions of perception, so sensation and intuition, they're irrational. And so uh, they normally are, they come later, they come second to the person's framework or judgment that they're using uh, when they move throughout the world. So if you have a strong thinking type, extroverted thinker, they have a type of formula that they use to, you know, put on the world and they put themselves under it as well. So they subordinate themselves and everyone else under this principle or this formula that they see is, is quite rational, that they live by. Um, but, uh, and then, but life itself is occurring, uh, you know, like via intuitions, via sensations, but they are largely constrained in this type. So they are overemphasizing their thinking function in this case and, and, and the formula that arises out of their thinking and they're trying to subordinate everything else to that thinking paradigm that they've constructed, you know, or that they hold is true, okay? And they think that is universal to everything. And so the perceptions that they should be receiving to update the model or to, or to just see how life is happening around them, uh, they are constrained largely because they're so focused on the framework or structure that they're holding through their thinking. And it's the same as an extroverted feeler, but it is the framework is not that of thinking, the framework is that of the, the values of the objective group or the objective world, so to speak. And so, um, you know, and Jung says they can get kind of disassociated because there's different pockets of values in different places, but that's for another video when we do a deep dive on extroverted feeling. Um, but let me read another quote by Jung here. On the whole, the life of this type is never dependent on rational judgment alone. It is influenced in almost equal degree by unconscious irrationality. So Jung then goes on this rant kind of, and he actually doesn't talk very much about this categorization of extroverted rational types, uh, but we'll get more into it when we get into the specific types, the extroverted feeler or the extroverted thinker. So we'll, we'll cover this type again, but in more detail. But this is the commonality of the, rash, the rational types that are extroverted. And so he then kind of goes on explaining about how the, this type is almost always kind of noticed by uh, their unconscious irrationality, okay? But then he goes on to argue that but it's not good to, but then he says that you could construct a whole typology based on the unconscious. But the reason he doesn't do that, he says, and he tries to, um, you know, juxtapose himself against Freud and Adler, because I guess he's kind of competing with them in the realm of ideas. And so he's trying to say that we can't type people in the beginning, I guess, through their through the unconscious to begin with, because if we're doing that, we there's a lot of um, room for mistakes, basically, because the person who is trying to make or understand the type of someone else, uh, who is trying to diagnose the person or something with the type, um, they are going to, they, there's a lot of error that they can make in trying to understand the unconscious because it's unconscious, so we don't actually always know, we can't verify it. But um, then he goes on to say here, this experience is one reason the more for basing my presentation on the conscious psychology of the individual. Since there at least we have a definite objective footing which completely drops away the moment we try to base our psychological rationale on the unconscious. For in that case, the observed object would have no voice in the matter at all, because there is nothing about which he is more uninformed than his own unconscious. 
The judgment is then left entirely to the subjective observer, a sure guarantee that it will be based on his own individual psychology, which would be forcibly imposed on the observed. To my mind, this is the case with the psychologies of both Freud and Adler. Shots fired, suspect down, request EMT immediately. The individual is completely at the mercy of the judging observer, which can never be the case when the conscious psychology of the observed is accepted as a basis. He, after all, is the only competent judge since he alone knows his conscious motives. So we can see there that Jung is relying on the conscious uh, perceptions of the individual person to determine what their type is because they know consciously what their type is. So uh, Jung saying we're relying on, on their consciousness to gain a foothold into typing them. And then we can move from there to understanding the unconscious functions that this person is exhibiting. But in general, Jung says that this rational, uh, extroverted rational type is um, defined a lot by their irrational, unconscious side. And part of that is because they deliberately exclude everything that is irrational and accidental in favor of kind of constructing a definite pattern or rule, as I said. And so there is like a definite pattern or like a definite, um, you know, logic or a definite feeling value that they follow. And as they, they do that, they are leaving out everything that doesn't fit into that pattern. And so they're also trying to fit everything which is in life, which is quite complex into these uh, feeling values or these um, formulas of thinking extroverted thinking. Um, and so as they do that though, they are, like I said before, missing out on the, the update that comes from the actual experiencing, perceiving through the intuition, perceiving through their sensation, what is actually happening around them. So they are, of course they have sensation and intuition, but it's largely constrained so they're almost like blinded by their own thinking or blinded by their own feeling in a sense. So th that's basically what it is, okay? They're blinded by their own framework that they go through life with, their own paradigm that they see the world through, okay? So they're, they're kind of blinded by that and um, that can make them quite rigid in a sense um, because they're not expanding and kind of... Um, you know, incorporating more of what is unconscious, really, which is the other functions in their life. And so, of course, they do have sensation and intuition, but they would do well to kind of develop those functions more so that they could make, you know, update their judgments, really. Um, and so that would really help expand their, their personality as well because um, they do everything according to their own reason and then they act, you know, um, but it's their own reason, of course. It's not necessarily the most reasonable thing. It's accordance to their framework of what is reasonable, whether it's reasonable and agreeable with their feeling or reasonable and agreeable with their uh, extroverted thinking formula that they've um, come to. And so um, what happens though is um, as they Gov trying to govern their life by these rational uh, intentions, uh, the irrational um, side that they've left out, nonetheless begins to show itself. Because think about it, you know, you try to think of something rationally, and then you try to go and live that out. A lot of the time, how you live something out uh, is going to be quite irrational, and it's not going to match the intentions of your rationality. And so that's what often characterizes this type. That's why Jung was saying that the, the unconscious often, you can see it really in this type manifest a lot because they're living out something that is kind of irrational, uh, even though they, they have the intentions of being rational and living out the framework. And consciously they do try to live out 
um, their life in a rational way that makes a lot of sense, especially to them. Um, but from the outside perspective, you were to observe them, you would see the inconsistencies. Uh, and so also this type uh, relies on, you know, the objective information to, to make judgments. So this is another quote by Jung. The rationality of both types is object-oriented and dependent on objective data. It accords with what is collectively considered to be rational. For them, nothing is rational save what is generally considered as such. So, in that respect, Jung then goes on to say that these types leave out or have uh, or, or suppress the introverted equation, the introverted side of that equation which is that uh, reason is, large, is in a large part subjective and individual. And so they are um, kind of separating themselves from their inner feeling or their inner thinking, um, introverted thinking. And so, uh, but they do still have, you know, introverted feeling and stuff. So they can still know how they feel about something, but it is largely restrained, you know, like, how, how they personally feel about something is, is restrained. And sometimes, talking about the extroverted feeling type, Jung says that some of them have lost how they actually feel altogether and they're kind of so caught up in the external feeling of everything um, that they are kind of have a hollowed out feeling that isn't really authentic, so to speak. So it's quite interesting, this type. And then he also talks about the extroverted thinkers, how they become really rigid with their, their thinking and they allow the, uh, their unconscious feeling to kind of corrupt their thinking in a sense because they try to fit everything into this narrow mold of thinking but it doesn't really coincide with reality or they're really stretching it. <laughs> so that it's not really um, as robust thinking as you would want it to be because the inferior side of feeling is undermining their thinking because it's unconscious and so and it has to be unconscious because if it was conscious they wouldn't allow that discrepancy they would go oh no that's wrong and they'll use their thinking to straighten that out and make it all nice and neat again i'm aware that this may actually have come across as quite negative for these types but it's not actually meant to be that way it's just that jung didn't really provide much information on the specifics of the extroverted rational types um and, you know, it focused a lot on the unconscious coming up uh, and being kind of a hindrance to this type. But the reality is, is that Jung's description in psychological types is a bit extreme because he's focusing on those who are wholly dominated by their, their dominant type, uh, their dominant function. So extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking. And so in this case, um, they have to differentiate or... Uh, assimilate their unconscious functions um, so that they're not completely one-sided. And so they would then become more well-rounded. They would have the perception from intuition or sensation to update their models or their thinking or feeling structures that they view the world through. And so then that person would be more balanced and not so much um, you know, unconscious of the irrational uh, functions coming up and just, you know, breaking through um, at any point and making this person kind of live out an irrational life and not live out the the rationality that they're trying to impose on the world. Um, but if the person is more well-rounded, they are then going to be updating their model and be a highly rational person, um, you know, the extroverted thinker, um, is a good empiricist and, and you know, outlaying a lot of facts through the op objective world and coming to a conclusion, um, you know, they're vital uh, in, science, in, in science and scientific endeavors. Also, the, um, and just everyday life, how to get things done and do things and the, you know, make sure the world is operating, you know, and extroverted feeler, if we didn't have them, then the social harmony of the world would break down. We need these people so the social norms can 
you know, of, of how we get along with each other and, and connect with each other continue to function uh, at optimal uh, level, you know, so there's not the breakdown of society. So we actually care about each other. And we actually go out and kind of live out these kind of uh, mutually valuable rituals, so to speak. And we can, you know, live that out so that society can continue to to function as a as an actual community and as an actual society, and so these people are vital to life. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to say that so it didn't sound so negative in the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, everyone has their place, and uh, but the main thing in here is that th there is that distinction between the the rational framework and how it can be far removed from the the perception of what actually is happening via intuition or sensation. And so there can be that disconnect between the world and this person's framework. And so the person has to be in touch with reality to update their judgments. That's the point of this whole distinction that we're talking about here. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment. Let me know how you feel or think about something and I'll see you in the next video.